Hello, my name's Andrew Lobb. I'm a mathematician at Durham University. And the title of this podcast is Should I Do Mathematics at University? Or, or Should You Do Mathematics at University? And that's a difficult question to answer because there are a lot of relative concerns there. It's in how good are you at mathematics at A level compared with your other subjects? How much do you enjoy mathematics at A level compared with your other subjects? Perhaps you have some career aspirations for after university that are either going to be well or poorly served by taking mathematics. So that's a tricky question to answer, so it's one I'm not going to answer in entirety. But there is a concrete concern that feeds into that question, and it's related to the fact that mathematics at university is sort of a sea change away from mathematics at school. You're studying um, really a related but different subject. The emphasis is totally changed. Rather than looking for numerical or functional solutions to um, concrete questions, you're really thinking in terms of, of proofs and theorems. And so there's this sea change from school to university in mathematics, and it's a very reasonable question to ask, will I thrive uh, at mathematics uh, in a university? And that's the kind of question that I'm going to try and answer. And I've devised a little test uh, that I'm going to present to you. Um, it's going to be in the form of a proof. So I'm going to present a proof, and then at the end of the proof, I'm going to ask a question. And your answer to that question is going to determine whether or not you might thrive in a mathematics course at university. So here's the proof. I'm going to start with a random triangle, and I'm going to do a construction on it, and we're going to see where that leads us, and then at the end, we'll see what we've proved. Okay, so um, first line I'm going to draw is going to be the angle bisector of, of the top corner. So this is the line that passes through the top corner, divides this angle at the top into two equal angles. Right, so it's, it's going to look roughly something like that. These two angles are equal. I'm going to call them both um, theta. And on the bottom edge, I'm going to draw the perpendicular bisector. So this is a line that's perpendicular to the bottom edge, divides the bottom edge into two equal parts. Okay. So this is at a right angle, it's a perpendicular bisector, and these two side lengths are the same. And these two lines are going to meet somewhere and, um, and mark their intersection. OK, so I've got two lines on my triangle. I'm going to add uh, four more lines. And um, first pair of lines that I'm going to add are just formed by, by starting at this point of intersection, these two lines, and connecting them up with the other two corners. this, and like that. And I'm going to add two more lines. What I'm going to do is drop a perpendicular from this point to um, each of these um, edges on the side. So that means uh, I construct a line through the point that passes perpendicular, uh, perpendicularly through the edge. So it's a line that looks a bit like this here. That's a right angle. And a line looks a bit like that there. So that's a right angle. So now we're, we're done with the construction, and we're about to do some mathematics. Let's figure some things out um, about uh, what we've drawn. OK, let's start here at the bottom uh, with these two triangles. Let's look at them. So they're both right angle triangles. They both have the same side here on the bottom, because this was a perpendicular bisector. And they have this side length in common. And we can figure out the hypotenuse for both of these triangles by Pythagoras' theorem. And we're going to get the same answer for each of them because um, the other two sides of each triangle agree in length. So that tells us that this length is going to be equal to that length. OK, so that was focusing on, on these two triangles. Now let's focus on these two triangles up here. So what about them? Um, so they have one side in common. They, have, they, they share this side. 
And again, they're both right angle triangles. And another thing they have in common is this angle theta. So if we think back to the beginnings of trigonometry, um, that means that we can calculate um, this side in terms of sine theta and the hypotenuse, and that's going to agree with this side because we have the same angle theta and the same hypotenuse. So that tells us that this side is equal to this side. Similarly, these two sides are the hypotenuse times cosine theta. So this side up here agrees with this side. OK, so that's looking at these two triangles. Finally, there's one last pair of triangles we're going to look at, and that's this pair of triangles. So what about them? Again, these are right angle triangles. These angles are right angles. They share the same hypotenuse, and they have one other side in common. So you can use Pythagoras' theorem again to show that this side length is the same as this side length. And that's it. We're done with the proof. The question is, what have we proved? Well, if I look at the length of this side, I see that it's equal to this side with a circle plus this side with a V. And if I look at the length of this side, I see that it's equal to this side with a circle plus this side with the, the V. So we've shown that these two sides on the triangle agree. So the theorem is every triangle is isosceles. And that might come as something of a surprise to you because, of course, you know that not every triangle is isosceles. So somewhere along the way, I've pulled the wool over your eyes. I've led you up the garden path. Um, and I'm going to ask you a question about that in a second. And your answer to that question will determine whether or not I think you have what it takes to thrive um, in mathematics at university. So I just presented a proof of a manifestly false fact. And um, if you spotted where I've gone wrong, then that is a good sign that you should be doing mathematics at university. But hardly anybody spots this um, at first, even after repeated viewings. Um, you may find it very difficult to spot. So that's not really uh, the criteria um, I'd give for saying whether you'd be good at, uh, whether you'd thrive in mathematics at university. But perhaps the real question is, does this bother you? Has the fact that I've presented um, a seemingly correct proof of a false theorem, does that upset you enough that you have to rewind the video to see where I pull the wool over your eyes? Because if it does, then you possess an important quality, the quality of perseverance when you don't understand something. And if this gets inside your head enough so that you need to resolve it for your own satisfaction, then I'd say that you're in possession of a critical quality uh, for success as a mathematician at university.